Hello everyone and welcome to a new tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial I will teach you how to color or transfer a value from a raster image or a geotiff image um, into a, a point cloud. So it's the opposite. Usually uh, people obtain DMs, DSMs, digital elevation models, digital surface models, hide information and export information from the point cloud into a raster image. Now what I'm going to do is to bring information or assign information from a raster image and bring it as a scalar field into the point cloud. An example of that is, for example, one of these models that I created and I got some comments. I don't know who asked me. A couple of professionals were asking me, how have you created this particular model of Parramatta in Sydney, in Australia, uh, in which each temperature value, land surface temperature, has been assigned to each of these points, where there are two methods. I already previously explained how to do this by assigning a RGB value from a GeoTIFF or a raster image. From that image is transferred into the, this is another model, into the point cloud by assigning a color. So what you can do is create or render in ArcGIS um, and transfer, um, create a render, create a new raster with that render and so that geotiff is then um, having an RGB color and the RGB color representing the thermal temperatures will be assigned using last tools um, to the cloud in QGIS. To do that, I, uh, there is a tutorial here so you can go and access the tutorial, go and check the model. But in the tutorial of today, I'm gonna teach you how to assign the real value no the representation or the RGB color. So this value can be temperature, can be high, can be any information, relative humidity, for example, any continuous information. Can be also the results of your CFD, computer fluid dynamic simulations. Um, and you transfer the GOT value, which has a geolocation, into the point cloud. Okay, how to do that? I already have a point cloud here open. Um, as an example. Okay, uh, this point cloud is approximately 2 million, so you can see 2 million points there. It's a beautiful point cloud. Um, what it's showing is the classification, uh, the scalar field is this classification. It has other scalar fields like user data or number of returns or intensity. Um, but now we keep it as classification, okay? Or to make it easier, just go to intensity. Okay, so once we have this information here, okay? We need to do is open a geotiff. The geotiff should be the same, um, should have the same extent, extent and uh, you, um, or size than the, than the uh, lighter point cloud. It's preferable. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open it. Open it. I have here my my geotiff. Is the geotiff was um, generated using QGIS. I use Solvake, um, which is a um, solar long wave uh, radiation. Um, simulation developed by Limba. Um, so what I is doing is just estimate the mean radiant temperatures based on DSMs, DEMs, and meteorological data. But I will create other tutorials on how to simulate using Solvake uh, in future. So just stay tuned because I will create new new content on how to do this. Uh, for now, this is the product. Um, just a geotiff. So what you have to do when you open it is just what it's doing doing in um, cloud compare is is assign an x, y, and z value. Um, that is a translation into the real value into the one that is using software to compute the information. So what we have to do is use the last input. Otherwise, it will it will not match with the one that we have. So once we use the same input, as you can see, the geotiff is imported as a point cloud as well to the side to the side to the canvas and they properly match with the other one with the point cloud now what happened is like if we try to assign these values what we're gonna uh, we're gonna have is a lot of gaps in between okay so what we want to avoid is that so what we're doing is we're gonna trans transform this uh, sort of geotiff translated as a point cloud back to the geotiff format as a mesh 
For that, we use this rasterize um, uh, tool, which is converts convert is converting this into um, a raster or a mesh. We're going to use one the one meter uh, size for the grid. It can be half a meter, but the smaller it is, the more computational time it will require. Uh, we're going to choose the band number one, which represents the band, the single band of the of the GeoTIFF image. Uh, we put set direction, it doesn't matter in this case. The maximum cell value, we can also choose between minimum and average. Um, we also use the interpolate to fill the gaps and we upgrade the grid and you will see is this one. This is the grid that represents the mean radiant temperatures. Okay? That's from the results of the simulation. Can be simulation from any other software. Can be from Rayman, can be from Envimet, but should be geolocated. So you have to do the georeferencing before in QGIS and uh, RGIS, okay? Instead of exporting, what we're gonna do is create a mesh and automatically the mesh will be added here. We don't need to use this point cloud anymore. We have here a mesh with vertices, okay? These are the, ver the mesh with vertices. This is what we're gonna use. So we have our model, have our mesh. So what we do is we're gonna use this tool called interpolate from another entity. You can use the other entity so it can be a mesh or it can be a point cloud and we will interpolate information we will transfer information into your point cloud as a new scalar field so first we need to choose the source in this case our mesh and then second we choose the destination then we go to the tool in edit scalar fields interpolate from another entity as you can see it's highlighted in two colors the source in red on here destination in, in, in yellow uh, we can swap if we want to Change. If, we, if we made a mistake and the source was the other the, the point cloud, um, we just swapped them. In this case, we choose the vertices as a source and the destination our point cloud. We we'll put OK. After that, we have here uh, a bunch of information. We only want to transfer the values of the band number one. OK. We'll put OK. And there are different methods of extraction. Radius is a sphere. It creates an a radius around each point and then computes the average, the median, or the normal distribution, which is represented by this, this sigma value around that point. This increases considerably the computational time because imagine it's 3.7 meters around each point, and it will do it for the 20 million points of our point cloud. We don't want that. It will take a lot of time, and the results were not very good for me. We can use nearest neighbor. When you choose this one, less computational time, which is the fast, we don't, we don't need a high accuracy in this case, but if you need higher accuracy, you choose nearest neighbors and you choose the number of nearest neighbors, okay? 26 as a default. And again, to interpolate the information, you can use the average. So it's each point, it calculates the six nearest points around it and calculates the average and assign that value to your point cloud. You can use median or normal distribution, okay? do it faster, we use the just simpler nearest neighbor, so it will try to match the value that is closest to that point cloud. Simple. And we put OK. And as you can see, it will take a little bit to do this calculation. The more nearest neighbors you choose, the longer it will take. We don't want that. We just want to do it faster for this tutorial, so it will take some time. If it shows here not responding, please don't touch your computer and try not to have any other software open. Okay, once we have done this, then we have this magic. We have the point cloud, the original point cloud now with the values. As you can see here, you have values. These values are a new scalar field called band number one. And this can be represented with different methods. So let me choose here. Band number one, and we choose the edited or we choose the blue to white. So you see where are the redder, the, the, the red areas are the hot spots and the cool areas are the cool spots. And now, how we know that it's properly done and it's not just solid, only a color? Because if you choose RGB, there is no RGB here assigned. You can export this as an RGB and I will show you quickly. Uh, if you want to put it in, in, in a sketch map, you need to export it as an RGB. So what we do here is we use the point picking and then we're going to choose any point here, uh, let's say in the middle or in the middle of the street. And it, it shows us the 45 degrees. 
and under the tree or below the trees, uh, the value is 38.7 degrees. So there is a considerable difference. The roof is 45, 46 degrees, and the tree is 38. Considerable difference. So it makes sense. Now, how you export this? You can export as an RGB and put it in, in, in a Sketchfab. Or you just can keep it like that, and then you can use any sort of different type of um, method for representing this. So you, you can use the, this um, specific color scale or any other color scale you want. Uh, let's make the red. The previous one was makes more sense to me. Okay. Once you have done this, you just go to edit, scalar fill, and then you can put convert to RGB. You can mix it with existing colors if you want or not. There is another tutorial on this. Uh, it will be added at the end of this tutorial in the description as well. We say no. And as you can see now, it has been added as an RGB. So now that is the RGB, you can go to the scalar field, change the scalar field to gray. And if you come back to the RGB, your RGB colors are representing your temperatures. And at the same time, you have the information of the temperature. If you put here your number one, it represents the value of the temperature. I know now there are, this is aerial LiDAR, okay? Airborne LiDAR. So it's it was taken with an airplane. But um, now you have terrestrial LiDAR like the uh, Leica model BLK360 that is taking, um, is creating the LiDAR point cloud with a thermal temperature already assigned to the value. So this is an alternative for those LiDAR point clouds in which you don't have the value of any information re regarding, for example, for the thermal conditions, and you assign that to the, to the point cloud. This case is mean radiant temperature. You can assign air temperature. You can assign height. You can assign um, humidity, or can be wind speed. Um, so I hope this um, tutorial is really valuable for you. You can still segment these using the point cloud classification. For example, here um, you can use the classification to choose only those ones who are. Um, let's say the ground and avoid the avoid the, or exclude the buildings and we use this tool we export it so what you can get here is the uh, temperatures of the let me go again okay. are the temperatures only of the ground and tree canopy very very good but we can also do segmentation based on temperatures and that is more interesting um, so you choose here the model again, and now what we're going to choose is the band. And as you can see here, sorry, let's choose this. Um, let's choose the band. Is oh here, band number one. I want the blue, red, blue, and red, and I want to choose only the temperatures, the coolest spots. Um, this is a very simple analysis. The real for analysis for cool, cool, cold spots and hot spots is using a special autocorrelation analysis, but um, that may be a, um, uh, the, uh, the, we, we may discuss this in future in another tutorial. Okay, so let's imagine I want only temperatures between 36 degrees, which is the lowest temperature, and 40 degrees, that will be my, sorry, 40 degrees will be my threshold. Okay, and then we put minimum and it's 40 degrees, okay? So minimum and maximum. You can use here also the ranges defined by perhaps um, uh, thermal comfort ranges, okay? You say up to 40 degrees is, in fact, 40 degrees is really high, um, is a bit uncomfortable. But anyway, um, you can use any, any range uh, that you want or ranges based on thermal comfort indices. And then you put explore. So what you get here, it's only values that are um, in clouds or yeah, that represent the coolest spots or uh, the, the values. Of course, you need to use a completely different, uh, let's say, method of representing this. Otherwise, it will, it will look very awkward like this. So you can use this. So these are the cool spots. Um, 
you can exclude the, the building. So you can do this for the only the ground and the tree kind of thing. Um, let's do it again for this extract. And then let's choose those ones who are between 36 and 40. Okay, and that's it. That looks much better. We export. And so we have here, we modify this, the color scheme. So you have here really the coolest areas, which are basically the shaded areas under the trees, near the buildings, under the shading structures. So this is a very useful tool to do analysis of your pond clouds. Um, very useful for anyone who, who, who is in climatology and urban design at the same time. Um, it can be useful for anyone who wants to transfer the information from any geotip, any sort of information. Uh, it can be wind speed, for example. Um, so I hope this uh, tutorial has been really useful to you. Um, I will hope to see you uh, on the next tutorials. I will try to teach how to do um, um, thermal comfort simulations using Solvix. So stay tuned. In future, you will get that information. Until then, see you and stay safe, please. Um, goodbye.